Back at Reliant Stadium in Houston, tonight's game brought to you in high definition, or as Bryant would say, in glorious HD. <laughs> There's Jay Cutler, the young quarterback, 24 years old of the Denver Broncos, coming off the best game of his young career last week against Kansas City. Houston has won the toss and will receive Todd Sauerbrunn teeing it up to kick off for Denver. And that's Andre Davis, the deep man, standing at the Houston goal line. The winner for sure stays alive in the playoff hunt. And the game underway as Sauerbrunn kicks it. Davis from about the three. Looking for a seam, got it for a moment. Breaks free and takes it to the 30-yard line. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the Houston offense, Matt Schaub has a separated shoulder, so Sage Rosenfels gets his third start of the season. He won the first two. He's thrown 11 touchdown passes, seven interceptions. Darius Walker, the undrafted rookie from Notre Dame, gets his first start. Kevin Walter, the leading receiver for the Texans. And on the offensive line, Chester Pitt starts his 94th straight game. He's played every game and started every game the Texans have played. Rosenfels to pass on first down. Nobody open, dumped it off to Walker, and Darius Walker makes the catch and then is tackled by Ian Gold. Here's the Denver defense. Up front, Doomerville has 11 sacks, three of them last week. Middle linebacker D.J. Williams, far and away the top tackler, 135 tackles. And in the secondary, Bailey Lynch and Bly with 17 Pro Bowls between them. Second down, Rosenfels to the 40-yard line and close to the first down to his tight end, Owen Daniels. Daniels latches onto it. He's the second leading receiver for Houston with now 58 catches this season. And Owen Daniels is a pretty polished young man. They really like him as a receiving tight end. You can see whenever they go into sort of a zone look, that's the first guy they're checking out. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to stay there. Andre Johnson's probably one of the top wide receivers in the game. And I look forward <laughs> to get a chance to watch him go down yeah, the field a little. He can do that. First down, Houston. Play action fake. Rosenfels with plenty of time. Drills it complete. Nice catch by Johnson. Andre Johnson and a late flag comes in. Dre Bly hit him. But Johnson has enough for a first down and packed the penalty onto the end of it. Face mask against Denver. Face mask, 32. Defense, five yard only. Automatic first down. Ray Bly, the guilty party. Bill Carollo, our referee tonight. And Andre Johnson against man coverage by Dre Bly. As soon as Dre Bly turned around to look back for the ball, he thought he had the coverage. Johnson just simply wheeled out of that route. And because the protection was so good, it allowed Rosenfels an opportunity to wait, 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 and get the completion. Johnson and Walter the wides here. First down at the 40 of Denver. Opening drive of the game. Play action fake, Rosenfels again given time. And the pass complete. Johnson with a catch. And inside the 20 yard line, Andre Johnson broke the tackle of Dre Bly. Champ Bailey finally had to track him down. Dre Bly has to be going crazy at this point. Twice now he thought he had Andre Johnson completely covered. He thought he had Andre Johnson completely Ray Bly's right there in position, actually gets his arms yeah, all over. I thought it could have been interference. Has it has both arms are on both sides of him, and he just can't get him to the ground. You keep trying to knock the ball out, but Andre Johnson is big and strong, and boy, he's getting off to the same kind of first half he did a week ago. 21 yards. Rosenfels has not missed. He's four for four. Here's Darius Walker with his first carry. Knocked down after a couple yards gain. And John Engelberger that time, as you see so often on film, coming from the backside defensive end. Engelberger may not be one of those guys that has off the charts kind of talent, Tom. You know what I mean? But just hustles all the time, always chasing plays. I would much rather run at him than try and run away from him. Second down and eight. 
I formation this time Darius Walker is the tailback. Walker using his blockers broke a tackle Darius Walker in his first NFL start got a good block from Vontez Leach turned it into a nice gain first and goal for the Texans. It's a nice call there Tom Vontae Leach that time there was nobody for him to block so watch him just say okay I'm just going to keep on going and then finally gets the edge block which allows for the big run down the field Darius Walker went undrafted even though he came out as a junior from Notre Dame. Nobody thought he was ready to play in the NFL, but he's proven that he is. Getting to play in his second straight game. His first NFL appearance was last week. Gary Kubiak has seen this opening drive, giving him a first and goal at the five-yard line. Still Rosenfels with the ball on the bootleg. Fake the pass, dives for the end zone. And in for the touchdown. Sage Rosenfels, brilliant on that first drive through the air and then scoring the touchdown on the bootleg. I don't think we're allowed to have a quarterback controversy yet, but Sage Rosenfels is playing awfully well. And for Mike Shanahan, he has to be thinking, I've seen this offense somewhere before. You know, <laughs> Gary Kubiak and the Texans right now running it the way that they always ran it in Denver for it so many years. It's not pleasant to see when you're on that other no, sideline, is it? Chris Brown, one of the original Texans, lined up for the point after on its way, and it is good. So the Houston Texans take the opening kickoff and march down the field beautifully. Rosenfels takes it in for the clincher. And it's seven nothing Texas. NASN trivia timeout. What player rushed for 200 yards or more four times in one NFL season? Stay tuned. The answer is coming up. XGames.com is the year-round online destination for action sports from around the world. We've got the latest vids, bios, photo galleries, and news 24-7, 365. Moto, BMX, skate, rally, surf, and the exclusive home of the X Games. If it happened in the world of action sports, it'll be on XGames.com. Bookmark it and log on early and often. Anytime, any place. XGames.com. I'll trade you a Red Sox home jersey and a Rangers t-shirt for that Pirates jacket. No way! I want that Cardinals hoodie and that Braves away uniform and an item to be named later. You drive a hard bargain. Majestic Athletic, the official uniform supplier for all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. Welcome back to NASN Trivia Timeout. Now, the answer. In 1980, Earl Campbell of the Houston Oilers had four games of at least 200 yards rushing, which is still an all-time NFL record. for the Houston Texans. Sage Rosenfels perfect through the air on that drive and then scored the touchdown on a five yard run his first NFL rushing touchdown. And for the third straight game the Texans have opened with a scoring drive. And for John Lynch and company they have to be thinking what was that you know this team's not even 500 if we didn't come close to stopping them. Chris Brown to kick off. Glenn Martinez is deep for Denver. Bounces into the end zone, down for the touchback. So now Jay Cutler gets his chance to answer the Texans' long drive. 7 0 Houston.
There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us will go and pro. most of us will go pro in something, something other, than, other sport. than sports. In something other than sports. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how. Hey, owners, you know, you can get all your American sports fix daily right here on NASN, Europe's channel for North American sports. Join me and this merry band of journalists as we chew up, David spit Beckham. out they all hate the sports of the How do you, you stop freaking matches at New Exclusively on NASN. Hort! Here we go, NFLnetwork.com to find out how to get the only television network dedicated to the NFL. NFL Network, your home for football 24-7. Trailing 7-0, Denver takes over at the Bronco 20-yard line. Jay Cutler under center. Play action fake. Tosses it complete, but for a short gain to Daniel Graham, the tight end. Denver starts this way on offense with Cutler after those four TD passes last week, his best career game, closing in on 3,000 yards this season. Undrafted rookie Selvin Young rushed for a career-high 156 yards last week. Marshall's a rising star, 75 receptions. And on the offensive line, Chris Myers has replaced the injured Tom Nalen at the center spot. Second down. Just a quick look pass to Marshall. Brandon Marshall, <laughs> who is so good at yards after the catch, finally thrown down by Will Damps after picking up the first down. He has 404 plus yards after the catch now, second in the NFL. Looks like he may have gotten shaken up a little bit on the play. Hard to see exactly what happened. He had some turf in his face mask that he was pulling out, but well, they just cannot afford that injury right now. Brandon Marshall, they call him Baby T.O., and you can see him why. He kind of got a little pile driver action going down into the ground. They're already short Brandon Stokely in this game. First down play. Cutler handing the ball off. Here's Selvin Young breaking a tackle, cutting back, and finally tackled in Texas territory by Will Demps again. A 20-yard gain. Well, that time the Texans came down, dropped the safety down the box, and you think you can't run against that. But Selvin Young, as he's been doing for the past few games, just breaking off big yardage. He's averaging 5.7 yards per carry, which is third best in the National Football League. He's literally come out of nowhere and may indeed be now the starting running back for the Denver Broncos. Meanwhile, Brandon Marshall being tended to over on the bench. Cutler steps up in the pocket, rifles it downfield in a diving catch by Glenn Martinez. There's that arm strength of Jay Cutler that you mentioned. Well, and more than that, Tom, I love what he did here. He went back, hit his back foot, stepped up in the pocket, got something on the throw. Glenn Martinez running a nice comeback route on the outside. But this is what they've been working on with Jay Cutler. Not standing there on his back foot. Step up into that pocket. Have confidence. And Martinez with a great route coming out nice and low. Gave him a good target. Gain of 17 yards and a first down for Denver. Ball just shy of the 30-yard line of the Texans. Hand off to Young. Selvin Young to the 30-yard line. Stacked up there by Dempster. Already has three tackles on this first drive. Here's the Houston defense with Mario Williams having the fine season nine and a half sacks. Miko Ryan's the rookie defensive player of the year last year. And in a secondary that has really been racked by injury, rookie Fred Bennett has three interceptions for the Texans. But they're really decimated in the secondary for the Texans. They're not going to take a lot of chances back there. They're just going to rely on Mario Williams to get some pressure. Here's some pressure. Knocked down and almost uh, picked off. It goes incomplete. Anderson coming 
to put the pressure on Jay Cutler, Charlie Anderson on a linebacker blitz. Yeah, and what happens when you're a young quarterback, you do stupid things just like that. I mean, <laughs> you can't do this. Jay Cutler saw the pressure coming, just lobs it up in the air. Really fortunate that wasn't intercepted right there. You just either take it and throw it all the way out of bounds in that situation or take the sack, but that should have been picked. Like Brandon Marshall has returned to the game. They'll need him here on third and long. From the shotgun. And flags fly. Did one of the linemen flinch? Might have been Cooper or Myers. Let's see. Looks like a false start. False start. 73. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. It was on Chris Cooper. So it puts the ball back at the 35 yard line. Yeah I wonder if Mike Shanahan's a little surprised at what he's seeing so far. They're playing a lot more man coverage. They're dropping down a lot more safeties. When you play the Broncos if you can take away their run you really hurt this offense. There's no football up there. Where, that, where's the football? That makes oh, there for, it is. That makes for a <laughs> slow game though. Yeah they found it. So third down and 14. Cutler lined up in the shotgun. Three wide receivers. Cutler under pressure, got rid of it. Downfield for Marshall and broken up. Good coverage by the Texans that time on Brandon Marshall. Fletcher and Demps had him right in their sights. Well, it looked like Brandon Marshall got his hands on that one. Let's see if Demps gets there and knocks this thing out of there just before it was. Oh yeah, boy, that was bang bang right yeah, there. Was. I don't think you could call pass interference no. on the play. Just a good defensive play by Will Demps getting there just in time. So Jason Ethan will try a 53 yard field goal. And a punt. It's a little pooch punt. Little roll and roll and roll. And will be dead inside the five yard line. Nicely done by Jason Elam, who with his 234th game in a Broncos uniform, ties John Elway for number one all time. Tradition. Pride. Teamwork. Spirit. He's something. 25-20, and he scores! 25-20, and he scores! Heartbreak. Glory. NCAA College Football on NASN. These guys look fantastic. I'm so proud. Join the Reebok Hockey Revolution. Visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. It's college football bowl season again on NASN, and this December we bring you 15 of the best bowl games from across the NCAA. these great games plus the five BCS games live in January only on NASN. Check NASN.com for schedules and information. Seven and a half to go, opening quarter in Houston. And the Texans leading the Broncos 7-0. Took the ball on the uh, opening possession and drove down the field to take the lead. And now a stop, but a nice pooch punt by Elam has put them back deep in their own territory. Darius Walker gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that last drive near perfection by Sage Rosenfels. Went right down the field, a couple of throws to Andre Johnson. Great look from the cable cam that gives you a great picture of how things actually develop down the field. Two pass plays in a row. And then once you get them thinking a little run after a couple of successful runs, come out there, 
Pump fake Hamza Abdullah and stick it in. But Sage Rosenfeld is definitely trying to get the touchdown pass. So that looks better <laughs> on the stats and there's run ins, but he'll take it. His first career rushing touchdown. Going to the air here from his own end zone and throws it underneath the coverage to Leach. Leach makes the catch. Ruled inbounds. He's tackled by DJ Williams. Williams with 136 tackles now. Over 50 more than the second place tackler, Nate Webster, on the Broncos team. Yeah, of course, Al Wilson out with the neck injury a season ago, and DJ Williams going from the outside linebacker position to the inside linebacker. A terrific player. He really is. He's a, he's a fine young player, uh, and he's growing in the position. You can see him every time I put on the tape this year. He's a little better than he was the time before, and he's going to be a pro bowler. Big play, third and six for the Texans. Rosenfels from the shotgun. Again underneath to the tight end. Daniels and Daniels breaks a tackle shoved out of bounds by Bailey, but not until he had picked up a Texan first down as they convert on third. And Hamza Abdullah just whiffed on that one. He looked like he took one big shot, and that was good enough for him. Owen Daniels, we talked about his abilities as a receiver. But for Abdullah, <laughs> that's your job. I mean, you know, there he was about two yards short of the first down if he makes the tackle right there. Made no attempt whatsoever to hit him or wrap his arms and first down Texans. So Houston on third and six gets 15 and a first down. Here's the reverse, the end around to Walter. Kevin Walter upended across the 30-yard line. There's a look at Matt Schaub, who is, he's done a good job here, but Sage Rosenfels has done <laughs> at least as good a job. Now, I don't know what you'd be thinking, but the guy's 2-0. and We saw him on his first drive. He goes right down the field. He's been virtually perfect so far. No, how about perfect? Okay. He's six been, for six. He's been perfect so far. And he's trying to, if not here, build a case for to be a starting quarterback somewhere. Second down and two. Short drop on the slant, almost intercepted, intended for Andre Davis. And Champ Bailey ne nearly able to pick off a pass for the fourth time this season. Looks like he's a bit shaken up. And boy, for Champ, it's been a tough season physically. He's had the quad injury. And, and with only three interceptions, uh, far below the, his normal production, he has 24 for his career. Seven-time Pro Bowler. Yeah, eight years but clearly physically this season has been one of his toughest take a break while they tend to champ Bailey and Yankee fans are like oil and water Cubs and White Sox fans at the same dinner table bad idea despite their differences fans do have one thing in common their heroes all wear majestic athletic the official uniform supplier for all 30 major league baseball teams Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. Live the NFL this season on NASN. Your Sunday kicks off with a live NFL countdown preparing you for three live action packed games. Then on Monday, start your week off with more football action and two first run games followed by NFL Primetime, Monday Night Countdown, and ESPN's Monday Night Football Live. Catch daily news and analysis from the experts with NFL Total Access every weekday. And see the best weekly magazine shows, including NFL Game Day, Who Is, and Top 10. And as the top teams fight for playoff places, NASN will bring you even more live crucial clinching games. With all this great NFL action, NASN is the only network for true football fans. Log on to NASN.com for scheduling and information. Dan Bailey on the Denver sideline after being injured on the preceding play. Able to walk off the field. And replaced by Dominique Foxworth. Meanwhile, the Texans drive, which began at their own four yard line, continues. Foxworth taking Bailey's place in that secondary. Third down and two. 
A toss. Walter. First down and more nearly to the 45 yard line. Well, they reused Walter on the end around, and that time they toss it to him. Nate Webster finally chases him down, but not until another big play gives Houston a first down and Bailey returns. Great play that time by the Texans. They see man coverage on the outside, so Kevin Walter is going to come back in eye formation, and basically the defensive back doesn't know what to do at that point, but there's nobody to guard him on the outside because of the man coverage. They simply left him on the other side of the field. Terrific play call. So two rushes, 21 yards for Walter. That one went for 13. Rosenfels with an empty backfield just tosses it at the feet of his intended receiver. And so Rosenfels finally misses one. Yeah, we have a couple of injuries to deal with now for the Denver Broncos. Their outside linebacker Ian Gold over there with an ice pack on his knee. And of course, Cham Bailey out, two of the cornerstones of that defense. So it's not going to get any easier for them. Ian Gold, a pro bowler in 2001, replaced by Jamie Winborn. And Champ Bailey has come back on the field for Denver. Second down and 10. Hand off to Walker, Darius Walker. Walker in his time at Notre Dame known not as a powerful runner or even a speedy runner, but patience and good vision, I would say. And uh, when he first came to Notre Dame, he wasn't even used in the passing game. On passing downs, he came out of the out of the game off the field and he's turned into quite a receiver. In fact, he left Notre Dame as the best running back receiver in their history with 109 catches. Over 3,200 yards rushing in Notre Dame, fourth most in Notre Dame history. Now, that's saying something. Yep. You know, I mean, that's not just, I mean, you talk about not just any school. <laughs> that's, that's saying a little something. <laughs> Another third and long for the Texans. From the shotgun, Rosenfels. Dangerous pass. He just got rid of it. Intended for Walker, who was leveled by D.J. Williams. Ouch! Williams timed it perfectly. And Walker could not hold on. That's the sort of athleticism you see out of D.J. Williams. He can really run not only sideline to sideline in the running game, but he can get deep ah. and all of a sudden take shots like that. But on that one, it was Owen Daniels who was wide open. They fooled him on the zone defense on the other side. He's looking around like, are you kidding me? He had not been that open all year. So Matt Turk is on to punt. Texans first punt of the game. Glenn Martinez draws a beat on it. Calls for a fair catch, faked it, and it'll be caught in the air by Davis and downed deep in Denver territory. Spotted at the five when we come back. The hard-hitting action of American football continues on NASN, the home of the NFL. It's crunch time with the playoffs getting closer. Every game is critical in the hunt to advance. And this week, we feature teams with Super Bowl dreams. This Sunday, it's a live doubleheader. First up, the Jacksonville Jaguars battle the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then the Philadelphia Eagles take on the mighty Dallas Cowboys. Coverage begins with Sunday NFL Countdown, live this Sunday on NASN. What do I control? I don't control the bumps and the bruises, the crowd, or who covers me. I don't control the bounces, the shootout order. But for that matter, what happens outside the rink? There are a lot of things in life I don't control. But then again, there are some things that I do. Live NHL continues on NASN with a Hockey Night in Canada doubleheader. After a poor performance in November, Toronto traveled to Montreal, looking to get their season back on track with a win over the Canadiens. Then in the Western Division, Edmonton take on playoff contenders the Canucks. A live Hockey Night in Canada doubleheader this Saturday only on NASN. Dome open for the first time this season. And our aerial coverage presented by Sears. 
You know, that was a terrific drive, that last one. It's hard to say it's a great drive when you don't get any points, but when you take it off of your four-yard line and plant it on their seven, that's a great drive. That's really getting it done offensively. You know, spotted at the seven, where they say Davis caught it in the air, and here's Travis Henry making his first appearance in the backfield, gets the handoff from Cutler and fights toward the 10-yard line, stacked up by Mario Williams, the first man to hit him in the Texas Battle Red uniform. Of course, uh, Travis Henry, the guy that they're thinking about is more of the power back in this offense. And Selvin Young has proved to be the changeup. The one thing they don't want to do with Selvin Young, though, is overextend him. They felt like when he got too many carries, his production went down. And they're really much happier with the sort of the power punch of Travis Henry and then a bit of the finesse of Selvin Young. High formation, Cecil Sapp, the fullback, Travis Henry, the tailback, now they break the eye, and Cutler to pass. Under pressure, buys some time, deflected and caught by Scheffler, the tight end, on the deflection. I believe that uh, Houston Texan got a hand on it to deflect it into the air, and Scheffler still able to make the catch. It, it went for 25 yards. A good deflection. That time, Jay Cutler with a terrific job there, buying a little extra time. They call it buying a second chance in the pocket. He was getting pressure off the edge from D'Amico Ryans. And he just slid a little to his right. Didn't back up, slid a little to his uh, right, and was able to find Shepard. You know, I said deflection. It looked like it from this way, but from that angle, you could see it was well over the defender's hand, so not deflected. Shepard made the catch, and Henry turning ahead for a gain of nine yards. You know, one of the things with Jay Cutler, and we saw a little bit of it on that play, they've worked on him a lot with his release and his drops, but one of the things they want him to improve on is quickening up his release. You see all these guys, I don't know who that 13 is, but you see all <laughs> these guys, and what they're able to do so well is get the ball out of their hand. John Elway, .30 second, is the norm for greatness. Jay Cutler, about .37 seconds. But he doesn't need a big windup. His arm is so strong, if he'll shorten that release, it'll really help him getting balls completed down the field. Oh, great. No pressure. You put him up there on split screen with John Elwood. <laughs> oh, no pressure at all. Travis Henry, another determined run. Nets a Denver first down. Well, since we started the comparison, <laughs> let's finish the comparison here. John Elway, of course, a better record on top. But when you look at the numbers down the way, Cutler, 26 touchdown passes of 17 interceptions in his first 18 games. The quarterback rating much better. Elway didn't get off to a great start in his career as far as just pretty decent finish. pure efficiency. But I'd say this last <laughs> two years made up for it. Three wides to the left on first down. Cutler throwing a screen to Marshall, a little bubble <laughs> screen. Bouncing off would-be tacklers and finally gang tackled short of midfield. And Brandon Marshall spent some time as a running back in when he first started football. Here's the play. What was it? He tried to get in the University of Florida. You <laughs> want to take you, a shot at I'm that one? I'll tell you the story. First of all, he, as a running back, he, first time they tossed him the ball, he got about 20 yards, and everybody said, hmm, gave it to him again, same play. He fumbled last time he played running back. <laughs> one and done. <laughs> I've had a few of those position changes myself during my career. And we'll tell you the Florida story when we come back for the second quarter. That's the end of the first in Houston with the Houston Texans and the Denver Broncos. Texans up 7 nothing. Tradition. Pride. Teamwork. Spirit. He's something. 25-20, and he scores! Tigers win! Holy cow! Heartbreak, glory, NCAA college football on NASN. There was a moment there where I thought that was a pretty doggone good throw. I, I can probably play. My sophomore year against Thomasville, I only got three balls. And those three went for 144 yards and two touchdowns. I knew right then that I was on my way. And the stadium was rocking. It was packed. Got a total of 400 some yards. That's when I knew. When people stopped calling me Archie's boy, started calling me Peyton. That was a big moment for me. Hey, owners. You know, you can get all your American sports fix daily right here on NASN, Europe's channel for North American sports. 
Join me and this merry band of journalists as we chew up, David spit Beckham. out they all hate the sports of the How do you stop freaking matches at news? You ever exclusively the bottom card? on NASN. Hort! Here we go, Ready to start the second quarter in Houston with two Shanahan's on the sideline. They're on the opposite side.